So let's begin. Let's start a new game in Nightingale. Now there is a little bit of a cutscene. Key takeaway from that little intro video is it sets the scene. So we're lost in this endless Fey Wilds. We get a glimpse of our mercurial guide Puck, which we'll come to very soon. It explains and sets up that we're looking for this city called Nightingale, aka basically our home or our home world, I guess, and that we can travel through these portals in the hope to find it. And that's just a very high level summary. If you do want to watch that intro video, I will put it at the very end and there's a chapter to it so you can go check it out and then come back here if you'd like. But when you very first start in Nightingale, you spawn in this mysterious cave area and behind you is a portal that you've obviously just come through from where I have no idea or it's not quite clear to me. Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. But looking around, you get a sense and feel kind of the uh, atmosphere that is inside these sort of cave environments that you will frequent. And really, there's only one way forward. So we started stretching the old legs, running through this cave until we reached the end of the cave, which is this very cool, almost beautiful room that I was really obsessed with, mainly because you had these crazy looking wood creatures. There was four on each side, some holding torches. I kind of suspect these guys have something to do with the main storyline or possibly Nightingale City's demise, possibly. You do see these guys stretch throughout the land, but very suspicious, but it does look very cool. And you can see in front of us where we do see first portal that we will travel through as well as our trustful or maybe not so trustful companion if you'd call him a companion and that is the legendary puck so puck you probably met in the stress test if you played if you didn't he's kind of like your guide he's going to help you sort of navigate through the tutorial areas but also sort of give you the crash course on what and how nightingale works but just before i was speaking to puck i was also mucking around with some of the uh keys and i just wanted to show you this so pretty sure this will be the same when we go into early release but if you press f1 on your keyboard you will get the uh, little button pop up i don't know if this will be live but uh, yeah this is just a handy little quick little thing you can look at just to give you a good idea of where all the buttons are abilities structure building all that sort of stuff all there you can also check your fps which is pretty cool but yeah let's go and talk to puck so puck talks in a very probable 1800 kind of style or maybe an artistic poetic style he's a very interesting character i can't really put my finger on him if he's good or bad but we won't go through all the dialogue we'll just skip to the part where he where we get to look at the uh the portals however puck does say he offers to guide us to a safer realm at the start and he does say take these blood stained cards it is still very much a mystery what puck role will be or was in the demise of nightingale you know you just don't know i did have a quick sneaky look to see if i could find any s tier weapons straight off the bat just in case you never know there might be a surprise or something but no there's nothing really else in this room so heading over to this mechanical little contraption this thing controls the portals it's like our uh, computer interface if you will where we input our cards we can change the realm difficulty we can also change if it's a public realm or private realm you can set it to public if you want to invite your mates and i believe you can do that at any point and uh same with private you can chuck it on private then your mates can't get back in <laughs> we'll come to the multiplayer aspect a bit later and explain how that's going to kind of work but for now we can see we have this interface where we have the biome card the major card so the tutorial that we were about to do steps you through the three current biomes which is forest desert and swamp and in each of these we will be doing various very simple tasks just to get the hang of the actual game so it might just be like building a campfire eating some food crafting some weapons setting up a tent so it gives you a good and quick introduction to all the base mechanics now the thing i really like about stepping through the tutorial in nightingale is that there's not much story you don't get caught on any annoying dialogue you can skip all the dialogue as quick as you want by hitting next and you can really fly through this very quickly you know maybe down the track there'll be a skip button i don't know but at the moment yeah you got to run through it then we get to play our major card which then sets up the parameters of what's going to be in this world how big it is what kind of creatures what factions are present in that realm what npcs so simply the biome card is just setting up what the visual look and feel of that realm will be at the moment there's only three they are planning to expand more i believe like jungle possibly and who knows what else and then the major card so those are the real interesting ones that can really transform each individual biomes difficulty what kind of things you can buy from the merchant and much more but we'll come back to that and explain it in much more detail in a little bit first stop is this beautiful forest byway and we greeted with puck and puck's going to run us through some of the very basic stuff so the cool thing is is that you have to just talk to him and then he'll give you kind of a mission you will note on the right hand side there will be the text box and the key thing is in this byway we learn about the hermetic guidebook and the pocket watch the the pocket watch is simply your map so if you press m on keyboard you'll get 
get a little map pop up and you'll see a watch there. That's what that's referring to. The map's pretty intuitive too. You can see exactly where you are. It can be a little bit rough to see the elevations, but you get used to how to read it by some of the lighter shading or darker shading on the map. Then he kind of tells us that we need to eat some things. So one thing that's really important that I learned is that uh, if you hit escape and you go into your guidebook, so the guidebook is like a central repository for everything. So you have the how to play tab that's going to give you a lot of the good basics and stuff that uh, will really help you get started. Then you'll have the shops. This becomes super crucial after you jump through your first couple of realms because this game has a blueprint system where you need to purchase certain things from certain traders to get access to it to be able to build it or craft it. We'll come back to that soon. Then you'll have your codex which will provide lots of little bits of information. Your glossary which is super important to understand all the different things that you can collect around the world. Your challenges which are sort of separate to your main mission. You'll also have your building and crafting but we'll visit those much more very soon. You'll be able to see your journal and your journal is going to give you your current mission. So at the moment it's find a source of food so we just need to find some berries and then we just got to consume those berries and we're going to learn a really critical aspect to this game. So we'll jump on these berries and it's going to give us this pop-up saying offhand items. So the thing in Nightingale is that you have your right and left hand. So your right hand is controlled by selecting keys from one to five I think and then your left hand is items from six to zero and your left hand is normally where your food is and then your right hand is obviously mostly your weapons or your more hardcore things. So it's a cool little system, two different hands, hold two different things depending on what you got. But for the most part, you're eating out of your left hand. So we're going to munch down on this food. And as we eat this, we will note that at the bottom, there is this 40 in orange. And after eating these berries, it's actually going to jump up to say what it will be like 66. Okay, so 69, funnily enough. So that increased our stamina or our top line stamina. And we have that for four minutes and 46 seconds, which you can see next to the red blood bar. So some things will increase our stamina and that's indicated by that orange bit down the bottom so it's really important to keep a good eye on your stamina because as soon as it gets to zero you won't be able to move which also affects your health and your hunger not to mention you have to contend with with the various environmental challenges so say something like walking through swamp water or water in general that will consume much more stamina or being exposed to hail or other environmental factors can also increase the consumption of your stamina so the best way to get more stamina is through recipes and particular more the, the more complex recipes shelter from bad environmental conditions say some things you can't avoid so much but like being in a desert without an umbrella you will get status conditions and we will go through those in a bit more detail down the track but that just gives you a rough idea everything you do will consume stamina and why we hear those other things down the bottom which we'll go through individually soon is hunger your tiredness your strength your stamina and that number above everything else is your hope level but more on all this soon so as we go along our next task now is we need to gather what we can to build a campfire. So pressing escape and go into our journal, we can see here we need to acquire rocks, sticks, and berries. You'll find rocks and sticks in any realm, whereas berries is just going to be in forest and swamp. Now, little things like this are important to kind of try to keep track of or memory of because when you need to find a certain thing, you may have to consider being in a certain major or minor place to get certain things. But you can also just go to your glossary and, and I'm pretty sure that will tell you where certain things are located in which uh, biome. So if you forget, no worries. So we're going to quickly skip ahead to building the campfire. We're running around collecting a ton of rocks and now we can finally build the campfire. So the campfire is our station for cooking and we can press B to bring up the build menu. And then I'm going to throw it down by placing it A and then just hitting R uh, depending on what you're using. I'm sort of switching between controller and keyboard. So place it down and then it does a blueprint, which is really cool. I really like this system. So you don't have to have all the items to be able to build certain things. You just be, you can put the blueprint down at any time, go get the stuff, come back and actually build it then for the campfire used to cook refine or craft items we're going to cook some berries but first we need to provide the fire with some sort of ignition or like some wood basically so you just hit a you can select what kind of fuel you want to ignite the fire and then that will give you a time of how long that fire will last and you can uh, extinguish the fire at any time you can flick it on and off but here we're just going to roast some berries so we've got some berries here we can go auto feel and it will give us like a good rundown and so we can see a bit of a comparison so roasted berries here it has an item level of 20 and then we got the raw berries over here. Even though roasted berries give you less maximum health, we have a much 
much better uh, stamina compared to just the uh, normal berries and also the uh, uh, duration is good and the hunger mitigation. So there's obviously a lot more beneficial benefits from cooking things. So in this case, we're going to cook up some berries from the campfire. Once it's ready, we can just uh, go over and hit X or A uh, or E, I think it is. We're going to munch on these berries and I want you to pay attention to the number down the bottom, the 61, as we eat these berries. Once I figure out how to actually control and eat things, because I'm a big noob at this point, we're going to eat these berries. I'm going to take note that uh, at the moment we have 62 as our health and then that red bar right next to it as well. So once we eat these berries, that our maximum health also increases. So the top line of our health moves up and we'll keep regenerating as well as that other little red bar. And that's going to be our strength. So having more strength in that little bar next to the 62 will increase how much health you can generate. So the more strength you have, the more likely you can reach your maximum health or your current level gear and all that stuff. So those berries do provide strength and health as well as some stamina. So we've covered, so now we've covered eating some raw berries and cooked berries to give us some more stamina and strength. Now we're going to jump over to the next bit of the tutorial just to run through that very quickly as Puck will tell us that we need to go through the portal into the desert realm. So we're going to journey over to the portal and we're going to look at what we need to do in order to get to this desert realm. So we're going to find this realm card machine and we're going to open it up. Now we have only a choice of the desert card. Then we're going to enter this another byway card. But the next bit of this tutorial, we're in the desert realm and that's going to be mostly teach us just to like forest for the basic sort of items, which is stones, sticks, plant fiber and stones. So with those four things, we can craft all the basic sort of very basic materials, weapons, things to get us started. So you will kind of find yourself doing this in each realm, depending on how far you are and what you're up to in the game. But that's what you're sort of going to need. And then we'll be jumping over to the next bit of the mission where we'll have to craft our first shelter, which is the very basic one, which is just a stick tent. So placing that down anywhere, keep in mind, you don't really have to worry too much about setting up or getting anything real right in this tutorial mode because you're jumping through these places really, really quickly. So you can just smash through this bit to get to the real actual game because these first few realms, yeah, just tutorials. So I'll put down the blueprint of the tent and then we can build our first sleeping bedroll. Now the berries will give us stamina and other things will give us stamina, but you will notice next to the stamina, we also have this other bar that's currently red right now. And that's actually like our restfulness or our sleep. So we need to sleep, otherwise we will die. So if we if we go to zero on our restful level or our sleep level, your health is going to start to drop and you will die. So you're going to die from not sleeping. So we need to get these beds down wherever we go and we need to be resting. There are potions and other things that can help your restfulness, but that comes later. The main way you'll be doing it for quite a while is by sleeping. Even at the end game, you'll probably be sleeping, I imagine, but there will be potions and some higher tier stuff, I imagine, that will be able to keep us charging without sleep. <laughs> drugs man but not only that the lower the stamina you have the worse your attacks do less damage they do it affects pretty much every aspect you know how long things can take to do things certain um crafting items you name it like it does really have a big part to play and this is a really cool aspect that i love about nightingale is that how good you build your base or house will ultimately give you a lot of bonuses for your health and stamina regeneration as you venture forth into the high tier of different kind of beds that you can get and structures and other elements do keep in mind that if your bed roll or bed is doesn't have any shelter and it's raining or hailing you won't be able to sleep in it so in this case i'm under a stick tent if it was hailing or raining i probably wouldn't be able to sleep because it would be soggy so something to keep in mind now we're going to take a short rest so there's a short rest and a long rest so the long rest will only occur if it's close to nighttime or nighttime then it'll skip night and we'll start in daytime so since it's sometime during the day we can just do a short rest and you'll note that the stamina bar goes increases quite substantially which now we just have to craft all the little basic tools and we can do that with just collecting all the very basic items this is one part where i got a bit confusing so to craft these first few items you need to press escape and go into this crafting menu it won't be in the building menu so in the crafting thing we can go crude items so these are uh, basic of basics so this is where you can craft your first items during the tutorial so the first thing i'm going to craft is this makeshift hunting knife now the hunting knife is super important because we need this to carve up animals and creatures that we hunt down for our own food and substance so it's very important to get this hunting knife but i'll show you all that stuff a bit later so we're going to skip this realm now because all we do is craft this stuff and then we can move on to the on to the next part of the tutorial so the next realm that the tutorial takes us through is to the swamp by realm i really like the swamp zones they look very freaking awesome probably the best ones i reckon that i've seen so far so just having a quick look at the desert realm before we jump through the actual portal and you can see it looks freaking awesome and the environment is full with different creatures now this is quite a small one so you can go and explore 
explore here. I didn't really do any exploring, but it just gives you a bit of an idea of what it looks like. It's freaking awesome. We'll go through the portal and check out this swamp realm. And just like all the little bits before, we'll just get a little bit of a uh, few things we need to do, which this one is going to be hunting down some creatures so we can harvest them and cook some meat. Now, I love my meat, so I'm eating a lot of meat all the time in this game. Quick thing about the swamp realm is that these structures that you see in the tutorial, you'll see in the other swamp areas as well, but they have a lot of cool stuff top if you do want to check it out. Got a heap of different items. A really good area just to pick up bits and pieces. So a good spot to check out and grab some items. So this is the part where we sort of get introduced to a little bit of combat. So we need to cut down these creatures and then harvest them. So these things jump at you. They look freaking pretty terrifying little monster demon looking things. But this is where we can grab out a hunting knife and actually harvest these bodies and turn them into meat so we can cook the meat or we can just eat the meat raw. Obviously cooking it is going to be much more beneficial and look give you more stamina and all that stuff. So we'll collect it. We're going to place down our fire just any old way because it's a tutorial so it doesn't matter. So the first thing it wants us to craft is a capelet but we're going to cook the uh, roasted meat. So if we have a look at the roasted meat for a second you can see that the roasted meat gives you a maximum health of 38. Good amount of stamina. The effect duration is huge and the hunger mitigation is not too bad. So you cook meat. I, I found myself eating a lot of this stuff. There's plenty of other good things you can eat. You can even have your own plants and plant beds and grow a bunch of different things. So heaps of options in terms of what you can eat. But for now, we will just have some meat and some mixed plants. So the mixed plants are great. Again, give a bit of health stamina, do a little bit of hunger mitigation. we will quickly make the cape lit. And that's again in your crafting, in your crude items. And then now we'll have enough berries and meat and we can go into final portal of the tutorial world. So this next portal introduces us into our first enemies and the abeyance realm. Now, so we've, so we've already covered so much. So we'll cover pretty much the real start of the game in the next part. It's already so much already, so don't want to keep dragging this on. But thanks very much for watching and hopefully you'll check out uh, part two.